Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna show you mastering GIS query logic using Boolean operators for a precise data selection in RGIS. So now let's get started. So basically, we're gonna focus on writing a query strings and uh, expand our concept uh, of SQL with introduction of Boolean operators. So the Boolean operator is just a sort of a fancy way of saying saying the things that helps us chain together the multiple parts of an query string to create a more specific uh, queries that helps us to return only the data we need so now let's uh, navigate to this option called selection so in that we're gonna select this option called select by attributes so the window pops up saying select by attribute and now uh, i want to emphasize again that this isn't the only spot that uh, this matters in uh, rgis but uh, we are using it so that you can visualize what we are doing in uh, with RGIS uh, query string right now. So now here in the layer section, we're gonna select this layer called Land Use Land Cover Route 2020. So we have selected that particular layer here. And next, we're gonna navigate to this specific uh, set of fields here. So in this layer, we have this uh, set of fields in this layer. So I'm gonna select this uh, field called Owner Name. We're going to select this and we're going to click this option called get unique values. So here you can able to visualize we have uh, a many unique values being uh, visualized in, uh, in this specific field called owner name. So you can able to view the different uh, unique values in that. So now here this specific uh, value called 0, 1, 2, 5 here represents the wildlife services. So the 0, 1, 2, 5 here represents the, the wildlife services. So now I'm going to navigate to this uh, uh, owner type, owner name. So we're going to double click this. So you can able to see that here. And next I'm going to select this equal sign. And we're going to select this particular number 0125 it represents the wildlife services. Let me uh, double click this. Now let me exp expand this uh, attribute table here. So now we have uh, selected the owner name uh, owner name equals to 0125 we can apply it so we have selected uh, the owner name with the number 0125 represents the wildlife services so here you can able to visualize here it have selected uh, 112 uh, so we have uh, 112 records been selected out of 6 uh, 6103 records so there is 112 records of the wildlife services and now to visualize the selected uh, records, we're going to click this option here, show the selected records. So here you can able to visualize the selected records of owner, owner name 10125, which represents the wildlife services. So here you can able to visualize all the fields, all the records with 1025 got selected here. You can able to view that, it gets highlighted here and uh, let me zoom into this particular area here and now uh, let's take a step back for the moment and think how this query is uh, evaluated so what happens when you run a query is uh, it goes through uh, by the clause the where clause and for each record in the database table it evaluates whether or or not the where clause matches and uh, it does this by assessing the value in this clause here so we can able to see that so the values in the clause here and then saying uh, is it a true or a false so thus uh, owner name equals to 0125 or it is uh, the wildlife services in this case so that is uh, if the owner name is uh, wildlife services then it evaluates to true and all the records that evaluates to true come back to me as a selection and uh, the, all the records uh, that evaluates to false uh, because the owner type name does not uh, not equal to uh, the wildlife services do not come back and similarly the same principle occurs if we switch the equal sign here to a not equal sign so now let me uh, remove this I will remove the equal sign and now let me place a not equal sign and now let us check this and let us run this uh, by clicking this option called apply so you can able to see that here so now here you can able to visualize so except the 
the wildlife services uh, all other records are got are, uh, got selected here except the wildlife services record and now let me switch back this sign here i will sw switch back to a equal sign here i'm gonna click this equal sign and now uh, that you have the concept of true and false uh, so those are uh, what the boolean uh, boolean values are so those are the boolean values are and uh, knowing this information uh, helps us change this uh, these part of the statement together with the boolean operators so uh, what if i want to do uh, more than just a select based upon a single criteria so that's uh, what all these items are here so i can able to see the like and or and not and these allows us to say a multiple criteria must be met or uh, allows us to say one of the these criteria must be met so kind of uh, this or that so now let's start with the and uh, boolean operator here so now uh, let's say that we wanted to know all the wildlife services land uh, that meets a certain uh, a conservation uh, status code and uh, that's the gap status uh, code which uh, we can see over in this database so now let me navigate to those particular field uh, called uh, gap status code here so uh, here you can able to visualize this particular field called gap status which represents the gap the gap status code so here you can able to visualize it too the two defines as a managed for biodiversity uh, biodiversity so you can able to visualize this particular field called gap status code so we're going to select uh, using our uh, select by attribute uh, windows here so you can able to visualize we have this field called gap status code so now i'm um, guess basically i'm going to select uh, the owner name equals to the wildlife services and uh, we're going to place and here and we're going to select the specific uh, gap status code here we're going to click this and we're going to get the uh, unique values here so the one here the number one here represents the managed for biodiversity so in the unique value of the gap status code here we're going to select this uh, status code equal gap status code equals to one so for that uh, let me uh, select this particular field here double click so i've selected the gap status equals to one we're going to double click this so now uh, let me click this option called apply so here you can able to view in the gap status code so uh, we have selected 38 out of 6103 so 38 got selected from 6103 so uh, it has selected all the gap status code equals to one so it's all got selected here you can able to visualize so it selected all the wildlife services field and the GAN the gap status code of one so now let me show you that so this is our gap uh, status code of one got selected and similarly you can able to visualize the owner type got the owner name of uh, 0125 got selected so now here you can able to visualize it let me show you here so here the portion of the area has got selected so it's selected based on the wildlife services and the gap status code of one so all the fields with the uh, owner name of 0 0.0125 of wildlife services and the gap status uh, this is a field so gap status code of one got selected so it's gets highlighted here you can able to visualize it so now uh, let me explain about this uh, specific code again here so here the first part it evaluates to evaluates the true that is the owner name equals to 0125 evaluates to true and here the second part that is the gap status code equals to 1 which evaluates to true so in the background what it does is uh, it evaluates to uh, is true this particular one true and this gap status code is true so here I am uh, able to visualize it I have uh, uh, write it as true and true so basically the owner name equals to 0125 it evaluates as a true and similarly the gap status code equals to one that evaluates as a true so true and true so basically the true and true which returns true so ultimately we get a full true for so for this record and then the records gets uh, returned 
so uh, for example now pretend that the status status code isn't the one and uh, for the one of those record uh, by the gap the gap status code was uh, managed for the biodiversity was 2 consider like say in that situation basically it water does us the true and false so in that case it will be true and false the first part of the portion gets evaluated and the second portion of part of the portion doesn't get evaluated so that is the first part matches uh, still uh, the wildlife services still uh, manages the land for some of the record that we are that we are looking at but the second part uh, that is the gap status where the gap status code equals to 1 that criteria doesn't matches and so the turns into a false so now uh, evaluating uh, that is true and false together equals a false so because if either of them are false on the side of uh, the true and and false then the whole thing becomes false and the record the the does not matches but uh, i could say uh, well uh, i want uh, one of the two records uh, or the one of the two types of uh, status code here so i want uh, both the status code 1 and 2 or the one of the two types of records that is the status code 1 or the status code of 2 so in that case uh, i will use a parenthesis so let me place it so now we're going to use our or operator here and uh, let me place my or operator and now uh, I will add my gap status code again here. Double click this and equals to. Now this time we're going to select this uh, status code of 2 here. Let me click this. And now let me uh, add a parenthesis. And now if uh, either of those matches and, uh, and uh, the department of uh, that is wildlife services owns the land, uh, then uh, we are going to get those uh, record backs. So now uh, let me click this. So now here you can able to here you can able to visualize the owner name equals to 0, uh, 0125 which represents our wildlife services and we have mentioned to mention we have used our and operator and gap status code equals to 1. We have selected the uh, the gap status code of uh, equals to 1 or the gap status code equals to 2. So we have selected two gap status code here 1 and 2 here. So now let me click apply and check this result. Let me click this particular option, show the selected uh, records. So here you can able to visualize in the gap status code. So we have both the code 2 and code 1 here based on our condition here we have specified here gap status code of 1 or the gap status code equals to 2. So here let me uh, click this first uh, result here that is our the status code of 2. So for this uh, first record, uh, what we get is uh, true because uh, the wildlife services manages the land as we know. So basically here the first part that is owner name equals to 0, 1, 2, 5, uh, wildlife services which evaluates to true. So now I have mentioned as true and let me specify this. And here in the gap status code equals to 1. So here from the field you can able to visualize the gap status code uh, for the first record it is 2 so which evaluates as a false so that is the gap status code of uh, is not equals to 1 here so based on this particular field it is not equals to 1 in this record uh, it's equals to uh, 2 so we have the false or the gap status code equals to 2 here and now when the gap status code equals to 2 we match this particular field here so it is 2 so 2 uh, so it represents gap status 2 so it is also 2 so it is true you can specify the true here so which is true uh, in this portion here uh, so then uh, we can uh, break it down to be a true uh, and a false or a true so basically I'm explaining this condition based on our boolean operators here so uh, based on a boolean operator now so true and false or true so uh, in case if it is a true and true it returns as a true let me show you that so now if the condition is true and true that is if uh, owner name is, uh, is equal to 0125 it is true and 
the gap status code equals to 1 it is true and the gap status 2 equals to 2 it is 2 means it gets true evaluated as true and as a result uh, the, we get the statement will be evaluated as is true so if the condition is true and true so the final result for all the criteria uh, will be true and if the record get matches we get a record back here so like uh, this one here the selected uh, records here so uh, if you're new to this type of logics is that the or statement is not an exclusive or uh, not in the way that we use in uh, english usually that is uh, it's not the only uh, one thing in the statement that can evaluate to true it's that at least uh, one thing in the or statement must be evaluated to true so now uh, let me remove this here now let me explain this one more time so uh, we have an uh, or operator here so this or operator here that says uh, one of these two item on uh, either side of this uh, the or operator needs to match so either this particular uh, one or this particular one and next we have an and operator here that says uh, both items on either side of uh, this needs to be matched that is this particular needs to be matched and also this particular one so uh, we can also uh, we can also chain these together even further and make them uh, really complicated the query statements and i uh, i'd like to say to be very careful about how you do this and make sure to provide a parenthesis to indicate uh, which two items are being compared and uh, there is an order of operation for uh, for how this is handled uh, if uh, i don't pr provide a parenthesis but uh, to the viewers it can be a little ambiguous and uh, and it can be hard to get your logic straight so make sure you put in your parenthesis so that you know uh, and your computer knows exactly how you are uh, intending for this to be evaluated and these logical uh, patterns go far beyond the select by attributes so uh, in this video i have shown you uh, how to work with uh, boolean operators in uh, using the select by attribute tool in uh, rgis so thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like